Mention the term hot hatch in this country and most enthusiast-minded folks will immediately think of the Volkswagen GTI. It's almost the dictionary definition of the term, and we've had a whole lot to love about them since they first landed back in 1976. It's crazy to think that at one point Volkswagen assumed they would make around 5,000 of these as a sort of homologation special. Instead, they wound up cranking out over 460,000. Today, we're staring at the eighth generation version, and I wanna know if this 2022 Volkswagen GTI carries the torch. The Mark 8 GTI runs on a modified version of the MQB platform also used on the seventh gen version, but the styling here is clearly updated. My favorite bit is probably the full length light bar in the nose. I'm okay with the wheels, and this paint color is a bit polarizing, but certainly plenty of fun. Inside the cabin though, that's where we start to see some issues. You see, Volkswagen decided to stuff this thing full of tech for tech's sake. That means we have capacitive touch buttons and sliders, which are basically the worst thing you can put in a car. They're oddly oversensitive, they're frustrating, and they're just not on the center stack, they're on the steering wheel too. It also simultaneously looks more futuristic and cheaper than the Mark 7 before it. The seats are fine, the shift lever's a little bit oddly shaped, and overall, it just doesn't have the charm that a GTI should have in the cabin. Things get good again when we talk about power and power delivery, and that's because this Volkswagen GTI uses the fourth evolution of the EA888 engine. This mill is a turbocharged two-liter four-cylinder engine that produces 241 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque. Compared to the outgoing Mark 7, you'll find 13 more horsepower and 15 more pound-feet of torque on the Mark 8. And the standard gearbox is a six-speed manual, while you can option out to a seven-speed dual clutch. So the bottom line good news here is that it feels like a GTI inside when you're driving it. There's a little bit of a golf ball texture to the outside of the shift lever, which is a nice little reminder, even if the shift lever itself has kind of an odd shape to it, it's not that bad. But the steering, the power delivery, all of it, it adds up to a wonderful driving experience when you just focus on the act of driving the GTI. It makes good noise. I can't tell how much of it is artificial or not, but it, it sounds good to me. The engine is rev happy, the throttle is responsive, and then the brakes aren't working that hard to slow this thing down because it's only about 3,100 pounds, which in modern car standards is light. But as it sits, you have a limited slip differential paired with a brake-based torque vectoring system, so this is a very neutral handling car. The Volkswagen was touting that it's almost oversteer happy, which seems like a bit of a joke. I don't think that's necessarily the case here, but it is a very competent and entertaining to drive front wheel drive machine. And that's fine. It doesn't need to be a hot hatch drift machine. It, it's, the GTI has never been that, and I'm happy to report that it drives like a GTI that I hoped it would. It's really just let down by a terrible user experience system here. The displays themselves are nice. The picture is nice. The gauge cluster is really nice as well. But using these capacitive buttons, these, these touch-based things and these sliders, it's they need to look at what other automakers have done in the past. Uh, Honda brought back the volume knob for good reason because they were absolute, absolutely roasted for taking it away. Volkswagen is going to experience the same thing, even though they're trying to force this stuff they've put on some of their electric vehicles like the ID4. They're throwing some of that related technology on this, and I don't think it fits here. You don't need it, get rid of it. This is supposed to be an affordable hot hatch and it still is in terms of the spirit of its driving ability. It's just losing some of the charm, a lot of the charm, when you play with the radio buttons and the climate control and all the other crap that you touch on a constant daily basis. But I will say, coming out of a corner, the throws of the gearbox are great. It actually has one of the best clutch feels in a Volkswagen I've driven in recent memory. I always remember really just not caring for Volkswagen clutches at all they're pretty you know dead not lively this one has enough feel so it's it's a much better clutch unit than i've experienced in volkswagen's past so overall driving experience pretty great So now let's talk price because that's always been one of the GTI's finer points and it's still good news here because the base S model starts just a tick over $30,000 that would be $30,540. The mid-grade SE climbs to $35,290 and tosses in a nicer Harman Kardon sound system, a sunroof, and a few other goodies. 
Well, the top spec Autobahn that we're testing here costs $38,990 to start and gets you that upgraded suspension. So what's the verdict on the Mark 8 GTI? Well, the styling and driving dynamics we're pretty big fans of. The interior though, it's a bit of a mess inside, which is a bummer. This thing is supposed to be a charming little rocket. Instead, it feels like it's telling you what it thinks you should like without actually listening to what you want. 